Hello again, and welcome back to another F Modern Unity tutorial, where today we're going to be talking about sustain points. We're going to be talking about what they do, how to use them, and I'm also going to show you guys a few tips and tricks uh, which you can use to avoid some unusual behavior within, especially within the C Sharp and the coding side of things. Uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to point out that I've actually made a short one minute long, if that, survey. Uh, which I'd really appreciate you guys taking. The idea of the survey is to find out what you guys are enjoying about these videos, as well as trying to find out if there's anything in particular about FMODERS and Unity that you'd like me to talk about more, so that hopefully I can improve these videos and talk about some you know, relevant, specific issues that people are facing. I've also come up with a few sort of bigger project ideas, which uh, within the survey, I'd love your opinions of. Uh, the idea of the, the project is to kind of create a whole complete package where you could learn most if not all of everything you need to know about using fmod specific specifically with c sharp and unity and give you a rundown of it all so you can you know get started and run up start up your own sort of projects and your own soundscapes and all that on your own you know without these sort of tutorials that talk about specific you know features and you know issues to avoid and things to do and all that stuff uh, so let me know uh if what your opinions are of those and if you, yeah, if you could do the survey, that'd be massively appreciated. I'll put a link in the description down below for you to find it. And I'll also, if I can, put a card in the top right corner of this video. So again, uh, massive thanks for you guys for doing that. But enough of that, let's jump into the tutorial today, which like I said, is sustaining points. Now, as you can see here, uh, I've got an event. Uh, I've just got a single audio file within the event. Uh, and it's just a voice, it's me talking. Uh, but I've also put these three sustain points up. One, two, three, right? Now to create a stain, well, first of all, what a sustain point does is basically an interactive way of being able to pause an event, not necessarily the audio within an event, uh, but pause the event itself or pause the cursor that's traveling along the timeline. You don't have to have it on an audio file, but it makes sense to do that, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, the way we create a sustain point is by right clicking on this little black bar underneath the timeline and coming down to add sustain point, right? Nice and easy. And then to get rid of it, right click, delete. Done. Uh, now then, let me just demonstrate how they work for you. So if I hit play on this event. Welcome, welcome everyone. Well, first thing you'll notice is me talking. Uh, and you'll also notice that the cursor has stopped at this first sustain point, uh, which is the point, right? We want to stop the cursor at these specific points. Now to get it to play again, we need to key it off or trigger a cue, which is what this button here is for in FMOD. This is how you sort of demonstrate it and test it. Uh, if I press it for you now, to the most exciting, heart pounding, it will play the event again. Basically, it will tell the cursor to pass the next sustain point it encounters. Uh, and at the time of me pressing it, it was already on one, so it counted that sustain point and moved on from it. Now, the important thing to note about these uh, cues is that they can stack, meaning that if I press it multiple times, uh, it will count that number. Let's say twice. Uh, and it will pass the same amount of sustain points. So in this case, I've got two left, right? I've got this one in the middle, which the cursor is sitting on, and I've got one more left. So if I press it twice, it will pass two sustain points. We'll say, okay, uh, I'll pass the first sustain point I meet, which is the one I'm currently on, and then I'll also pass the second one I meet, which is this one here, without stopping. Uh, so if I demonstrate that for you now, and the least boring history tour you've ever experienced, the tour of the original phone. There we go. So it keeps going until it finds its next sustain point. Uh, the important thing to note about this, or the reason why I'm telling you this, is because you can have some issues within C Sharp, depending on, not well, not issues, depending on how you set up your code, you may find that you'll accidentally queue off multiple, well, queues, basically, uh, especially if you're doing things by frame. You know, you might tell it to trigger a queue within the update function within C Sharp, and obviously that will do it every frame, which is a mistake I made a lot of the time. I couldn't work out why it wasn't stopping, uh, which, I'll, like I said, I'll explain in a bit. In fact, let's jump into C Sharp, and I can stop rambling and explain how uh, it works. I've also got a little project demo set up for you to explain a kind of instance that you might use this, I suppose. So what I've got here is I've got that event, uh, and I've got a little speaker here to play that voice, you know, as if it was coming from that old uh, phonograph. Uh, or what I've also got here is a little box, a little trigger box. The idea is that when I play the scene, the uh, voice is going to start playing from the uh, phonograph here. 
uh, it's also going to pause when it hits the first sustain point. It's not going to start playing again until my little player character here enters this uh, trigger box, which you could use to cover a whole area. So uh, a good way to use this is if you wanted to, you know, stop an event and start it again when a player enters a certain area of your level or your map, for example, which is kind of what I've set up here. So let me quickly demonstrate that for you. If I hit play for you uh, and let the scene do its thing, we should hear my voice if it wants to load. Welcome, welcome everyone. There we go, and it's paused, like it said, because it's hit that first sustain point. Before I continue, I must explain that uh, if you're using, if you're listening to this video, maybe on a mono speaker on your phone or through two speakers, you know, hooked up to your computer or something, I have, I have got some plugins. I've got the Oculus SDK plugins that I talked about in one of my previous videos uh, attached to this product meaning that it thinks uh, you're listening to this through two headphones, basically, or, you know, earphones. Uh, so if you hear weird artifacts, you, that might be why. So it's best to put some ear headphones on so uh, you don't get that, basically. It, it won't affect the tutorial, but I thought I'd let you know. Anyway, enough of that. As you can see, I've uh, paused the event, essentially. Now, if I my player here enters this little area... To the most exciting you'll notice that the event continues and now it's stopped again because it's hit that second sustain point. Uh, if I direct your attention down here, I've also set up a little message to pop up called Q, telling me when uh, I've basically activated the next key off or you know triggered the next Q. So it's past that first sustain point. If I leave the box and then enter it again. And the least boring history tour you've ever experienced. Same thing happens again, right? Nice and easy. So let's have a look at the two uh, scripts I created to demonstrate this behavior. Let's have a look at this one first. So this is the audio script. This is the one uh, I believe I attached to the speaker itself. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is the one that's basically going to trigger the event, play it, and that's about it really. Uh, it will do some more behavior in a second, but I'll explain that later. So pretty standard stuff. As you can see here, I've created a, an event instance uh, as soon as I've created the class. Uh, and I've called it voice because this is just the voice playing, right? Now, because I've set this up within two uh, scripts to trigger this behavior, which you don't have to, by the way, this is just why, this is just because I was using the voice to play from this game object here and the trigger box to trigger the cues, I decided to use two different scripts, uh, one attached to the speaker, one attached to the trigger box, right? Uh, so because of that, I had to make the event instance public, as you can see here. This is because I want to reference it within the second script, which in my case is trigger the trigger box script, which is attached to the trigger box. Uh, which you, if you're doing this all in one script, you don't have to do. You can just delete that, or you can make it private. Doesn't matter. Uh, but if any of you are curious, that's why I made it public, right? Cool. So in the start function, I've attached that event instance uh, to the event within fmod. Uh, and I've just named it directly so I don't have to do the whole public thing within, you know, the uh, inspector within Unity. I know which event I'm using, so I don't have to worry about that. As you can see, uh, in case you're wondering why I've got voice and voice event, within, I might have talked about this before, but I'll quickly say it again. Within my FMOD project, I've actually got the event stashed within a folder. So I have to reference that within the script. So I've got uh, event, colon, or is that a semicolon? I'm not sure. No, that's a colon. Is <laughs> Forward slash, that's standard. Then I have to reference the folder that my event is in. And if you've got multiple folders, you'll have to obviously reference them uh, after this. Then I'll go uh, forward slash and then the event itself. So voice is the folder, voice event is the event. Okay, cool. Next, I'm just going to tell it to play the event with by referencing the event instance and then saying dot start. And we've done this a million times. So hopefully you guys know how to do this. Uh, next in the update function, uh, again, this is something we've done before. Because this is a 3D event, I want to basically attach it to my game object within Unity, use its sort of location and transform information, which is all here, uh, to tell FMOD that it's in a space and we need to kind of uh, calculate, you know, information depending on that. You know, we don't want it to just play like a sort of, a straight signal. We want it to, you know, we want some attenuation or some panning to happen when the player moves around so it feels like it's in a space. But again, we've done that before, uh, which by the way, I'll put in the cards in the top right or a link in the description to all this information if you haven't watched those videos before. So for example, this line here, I'll reference in the top right corner of the screen and, you know, show you a video on how to do that. So 
basically, what I'm trying to get out with this script is this is pretty standard stuff. All this is doing is telling the event to play. That's basically the gist of it. The trigger box script I've got here is the one that's doing all the queuing off and controlling the sustain points. So let's talk about that. Uh, first thing I've done is created a, actually, I don't think I need this anymore. Player inbox. Uh, give me one second. I just want to, no, I'm not using that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly get rid of this. That was me trying to set it up earlier. It turns out I don't need that variable, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, what I do need, however, is this bit here. So what I've done is I've basically created a public uh, reference to the game object speaker. If I go back to the inspector, and again, <laughs> may have done this before, I don't know. Uh, if I go to the trigger box and I go to the uh, script component I've created for this, as you can see here, I'm referencing the game object speaker so that I know where the audio script is. And to do that, you just click on the game object and drag it into this box here, right? Which I've already done, nice and easy, okay? So that's what that's for. Second thing I've done is I've referenced the script itself or the class itself, which is audio, and I've given it a, a name, underscore audio, just to, you know, well, separate the two. I can call it the same name. That would be confusing. So uh, that's what I've done there. So in the start function, uh, what I've done is basically set up a way for us to take the script on the speaker game object and reference it. Obviously, that's where we're triggering the uh, audio and controlling the event. So we kind of need to reference that if we want to you know, trigger our cues. Uh, so what I've done here is I've said, OK, well, that uh, reference script uh, is going to be equal to the game object that it's on. And we want to say get component audio. So we're going to say get component the component script, <laughs> if that makes sense. We want to get this and tell it to associate that component uh, with this here, underscore audio, right? Cool. Next uh, is we need to decide how we want to, you know, control the behavior of these cues. We want to say, you know, how do we want to tell the audio to play again once it hits a sustain point? And I've done that with the on trigger enter function. Whenever the player enters the trigger box, I want it to say, okay, take that uh, script component, which is on the uh, speaker game object, take the voice event, which we created, uh, and is referencing the FMOD event, uh, and we want to trigger a queue, basically. So this line here, trigger queue with empty uh, parameter brackets, that's basically, all that does is basically the exact same thing as this button here. It triggers the queue, it tells it to move past the next sustain point. And if you basically, if you type that multiple times, or if you reference it multiple times, like I said in the update function, it will stack. It will say if I did it three times, it will say okay. Oh, whoops! It will say okay. Pass the next three sustain points. Okay. Uh, so that's all that's doing. If I had the uh, voice event, if I had that referenced in this game object, I probably wouldn't need this. I'll just get rid of it, and it look more like oh, whoops! It look more like that. Okay. Uh, but obviously, because it's in a different script on a different game object, we need to reference it. And then last but not least, this debug.log queue, this was how I was bringing up that message here. That's all that does. So whenever we uh, enter, what's my script? Whenever we enter the, the trigger box, it will uh, queue off uh, the one of the sustain points, and it will also bring up one of these messages here, so we know we've entered it, okay? Cool. Now, if I go back to the audio script, uh, let's talk about this bit I've kind of got rid of, basically. Uh, let's quickly save the uh, script so we can now use all this information I've got here. Uh, in a previous video, uh, which again, I'll stick in the description and then the top right corner of the video for you to check out, we use playback states. I think in the past we've used playback states to check if an event is playing and if it's stopped. I think that's it, I might be wrong. But today we're gonna be using them to check if a uh, event is sustaining. Uh, which is uh, very similar to what we've done. Uh, the only thing we change really is this line here. So let's talk about it. So the first thing we're gonna do within the update function is create a playback state. Uh, and I'm gonna call it PB state, cool. Then I'm going to associate my event with that playback state, uh, we, where you use this line here, voice, which is my event, dot get playback state uh, out to the playback state I created. Then I'm gonna create an if, uh, Function state, I'm not sure what that is. And if state, I think it's a statement. And I'm gonna say if the uh, PB state is equal to sustaining, if that playback state is sustaining, or basically if that event is sustaining, if it's, let's go back to FMOD, if it's hit any one of these sustain points, 
uh, then we want it to uh, trigger this debug.log. We want it to tell us in the console of Unity that the voice is currently paused or the event's currently paused, okay? So let's quickly jump back into Unity. I'll play the uh, scene again. Uh, this time when I enter the trigger box, we should see that uh, message pop up quite a bit actually <laughs> in the console. Welcome, welcome everyone. Oh, there we go. I didn't even have to, of course, I didn't even have to enter the trigger box. So because the uh, cursor has now hit one of the sustain points, it's sending me this message. And because I set up that message within the update function, it's doing it every frame. Uh, and that, I think, is basically all you need to know. So like I said, if I quickly pause this, if I were to put the... Um, the reason why I face... One of the reasons why I've put this trigger cue uh, line in the on trigger enter function with a different script is because if I checked every frame, if I checked every frame to see if the player was uh, in that box and queued it off within this function, it would, by every frame, if I go back to F mod, it would do this. It would be essentially constantly clicking that Q button and telling it to pass, you know, well, if we're running at 60 frames per second, it would tell it to pass 60 sustain points within every second, which is not what we want. So that's a very important thing to avoid. You want to make sure you're only calling this once per frame and no more, otherwise you'll get some weird behavior where it's just ignoring all the sustain points. So if you're going to use this, remember that. Um, and I think that's everything we need to know. Everything, yeah, that covers it. Cool. So thank you very much for watching uh, another video. Uh, like I said, if you want to fill out that uh, survey and let me know what I'm doing well, what I'm doing wrong, that'd be massively, massively appreciated. Uh, and it takes less than a minute. So that'd be great. Uh, and yeah, that covers everything. So as always, I've been Henry Scott. And thank you very much for watching.